Good afternoon, students. Today we have our soft computing class as our pre-scheduled routine. So basically, we are going to cover today Mamdani fuzzy modules. If we recapitulate what we have learned uh, from the previous class, we can remember that we are now as far aware of the if then rule based system so we know that that this if part is associated with the antecedent part and then part is associated with the consequent part and this rule based system can be formed in case of canonical type so what is this canonical forms of rule based system that means if i say the temperature is uh, 20 degree that is the antecedent part then fan speed is low this is fan speed is low this is the consequent part but if I say there is uh, not only one temperature uh, value there may be if there may be uh, more than one temperature value like if there is uh, temperature like uh, 30 degree centigrade then fan speed can be medium. If temperature is 50 degree centigrade, then fan speed is quite fast. So basically, we can have more than one rules. And if we can put down these more than one rules in one such space, then we can form canonical forms of rule-based system. So, if we go through the canonical forms of rule-based system, we can see that there, are, there can be R number of rules. Then the rule 1 is if there is one condition, that means condition 1 is satisfied, then automatically we can follow the restriction 1. Rule 2 states that if there is condition 2 is satisfied, then automatically we can think of restriction 2. And likewise, if the rule i mean if the rule r states that if condition r is satisfied then automatically we can go for the restriction r so in this manner we can have r number of rules and we can have r number of antecedents as well as r number of consequence so all these antecedents can be you know Combine either using any conjunction method or in any case of disjunction method. So basically, we can have multiple conjunctive or disjunctive antecedents to form a particular, you know, uh, consequent. So in this case, we know that we are very familiar about some fuzzy operators. One fuzzy operator is called AND operator or intersection operator or minimum operator. And one operator is called OR operator or union operator or maximum operator. So we can use maximum, we can use these two operators to form a combination of all these canonical forms of rule-based system to, uh, I mean, obtain a particular consequent. So, what Mamdani fuzzy inference states? Mamdani fuzzy inference, first of all, involves four distinct steps. That is, fuzzification of the input variables, as we have already learned from a basic fuzzy inference architecture. There is the second step, which is called rule evaluation. The third stage is aggregation, because we know that there is a building block which is called aggregator in the fuzzy inference model and the fourth one is the defuzzification. If we now go through a particular example which example basically relates with uh, project uh, funding and project staffing. So we have all heard about some kind of project grant and uh, some kind of R&D project and there the two basic uh, parameters are very major which is one is project funding what kind of funding we automatically I mean 
we automatically are given from the government and automatically how much amount of project staffing we can you know involve in that particular project so that we can deliver the output on time so that our risk is low so basically or every time we have in our mind that we need to lower down the risk so that we can deliver the desired output on time so now if we present this particular example of this particular scenario by three distinct rules then let us say that rule one says if x is a3 so x is the linguistic variable which denotes the project funding and a3 means adequate this is a kind of fuzzy set as you can understand or if one antecedent or the second antecedent that y is b1 so y is basically the linguistic variable which denotes the project staffing is b1 b1 is another fuzzy set which denotes small then the consequent part is z is c1 so now z is the linguistic variable which denotes the risk factor and c1 is another fuzzy set which is basically related to this risk which is low so if this is a rule number one and if we look about rule number two that is if x is a2 that means project funding if mean marginal and y is b2 and if we involve a large number of project staffs project staffs and that is why it is written that and project staffing is large then z that means risk is medium z is c2 so c2 denotes the risk is normal now rule 3 states is if x is a1 that means project staff funding is inadequate that means not adequate amount of funding we have got so basically risk is high this is a normal sense so z is c3 so that means risk is high so here we can see that the, this x y z are those fixed linguistic variables which denote project funding project staffing and risk respectively here a set fuzzy set a is basically you know denoting the amount of project funding the fuzzy set b is basically denoting the number of project staffing and the fuzzy set C is denoting the measure of the risk factor. That is why they, these fuzz, three fuzzy sets A, B and C are having three distinct values like A1, A2 and A3. That means which is related to the project funding which is inadequate, marginal and adequate. The fuzzy set B which is basically denoting the you know the number of project staffing it has also three values like b1 b2 uh, two values uh, sorry b1 and b2 which is either project staffing may be small or project staffing may be large and we have another fuzzy set which is c so c is having three distinct values c1 c2 c3 which basically is related to the risk factor and that can be either low or normal and high respectively so if this is the scenario then first step is what first step is falsification so basically we are take going to take any crisp input like x1 and y x1 and y1 so this file crisp input you can see that this crisp input cuts all these membership functions like a1 a2 a3 because this fuzzy set is having three uh, distinct uh, you know membership uh, I mean fuzzy set small small fuzzy set subset so basically those small, small subsets may be denoted by these three membership functions and it is a random value of x va linguistic variable let's say x1 that is the crisp input right so this crisp input cuts this fuzzy membership function you can see at these two points but automatically this x1 is not getting a3 at that particular x is equal to x1 point so if i now measure what is the membership value let's say that this is the point where we can measure the membership value is like 0.2 but for whom for 
A2, fuzzy set. If we are going to measure the membership value at this point where x1 basically cuts the membership function A1, and let us having the membership value is 0 0.5, but that 0 0.5 is associated for A1. So we note down these two values and automatically the what is the mu of A is equal to A3 that is not written here, that is 0 because x1 is not touched or is not cutting anywhere for A3. So this is the same thing is followed for Y1 as well, that is the crisp input Y1. And this is uh, like, this is a very random uh, value for Y at a point Y1. So here basically this Y1 is cutting these two membership functions. One is B1 and another is B2 at these two points. And we can take the membership value is like this is 0.1 for, for you can see B1 and this is 0.7 let's say for B2. Right. So this is how the step one fuzzification is happened. Now, there is a step two is the fuzzy rule evaluation. So, what is a fuzzy rule evaluation? Rule evaluation is whenever we are taking this fuzzy five inputs, that is the 0 0.5 for this, 0 0.2 for this, 0 0.1 for this, 0 0.7 for this. Now, apply them to antecedent of the fuzzy rules because we have number of fuzzy rules. We have more than one fuzzy rules. We can see we have more than one, you know, antecedent part as well. So, if a given fuzzy rule has multiple antecedents, we know that we can apply fuzzy operator and or or to obtain a single number that represents the result of the consequent part, right? So that consequent part is nothing but the, you know, the obtained value, obtained output of those fuzzy rule which is having multiple multiple antecedents and this consequent is nothing but the result of antecedent evaluation. So basically this number whatever we obtained by this process this number is basically the truth value to the consequent membership function because we need to obtain the consequent part at the end of the whole process. So this is, these are the two process, two steps, first two steps of the Mamdani first rules. I'm sorry because this is the first part you can say that is the, we have two classes today. So this is the, you can say that, that this is the input of the first class. We need to, uh, you know, finish this uh, video lecture here. But obviously after um, five to ten minutes, we are again uh, be online and we need to capture the second uh, part of this particular lecture which involves the step three and step four as well that means the aggregation part and obviously the fuzzy membership part so that how we can obtain the final crisp value from this particular process using Mamdani fuzzy model. So um, stay online um, and Keep following. Thank you.